All right, so we got some light. First things first, we're going to want to start to remove the terminals. So we'll take this ground terminal off first. That's going to be your black side. And the terminals look in good shape. There's no corrosion. There's no fuzzy looking stuff. There's no battery acid or anything protruding from the battery. So that's a good thing. It means we won't have to clean or service the terminals very much when installing the new battery. So we officially have the battery disconnected. Now it's disconnected as soon as you have the ground off, but now we have the ground and the positive side disconnected from the battery. Now, next thing we want to do once these two terminals are clear is we want to look for any hold down screws. For this, we have a 10 millimeter nut that runs on this bar across, and that's our hold down bracket. So what we want to do next is get that popped off. So we're going to continue taking this battery hold down screw out. All right. And so what it looks like on this side is we have these tangs, these hooks. Now, as you loosen this, you give yourself more play on this rod and you're able to turn it and get the entire battery hold down assembly out without having to fully remove the nut off of that stud. So, that's removed. The terminals are disconnected. This battery is now fully loose. So, with good lifting posture, of course, let's try to get this thing yarded out of here. They're never easy. It's amazing. Alrighty, now we can get the new battery in. good notable mention here is you always want to make sure that the posts are on the correct sides. Now the positive came off on this side so we have our new positive over here, ground is over here. However, there are some batteries with reverse terminals. There's usually a letter associated in the part number. I forget what it is but it refers to switching of the posts. You always want to make sure that it's a top post and the terminals are in their correct location. So now that we've done that, we want to focus again on getting the hold down bracket back in place. So first we'll get this back side looped in to its respective spot. And we're going to want to go underneath this handle because the old battery did not have one. Get that finagle down in there, get that locked down in place. And then, like I said, we're going to turn this stud so it catches that factory location. It looks good. I like it. This one a little bit better. Alrighty. I'm happy with that. It's nice sitting flush. I have flush edges on this back piece. This front hold down will become flush once we snug it down. So let's get this bad boy snug down. Now, it's nice to have a battery saver when you're doing batteries. And what that is, is it basically applies a small amount of voltage to all of the vehicle's computer systems. So there's multiple modules located throughout these cars, right? Transmission control, um, the radio, the clock, uh, cruise control, ABS, um, all kinds of stuff. And when you're disconnecting a battery, you're completely draining all of those batteries. So sometimes the car is going to have to spend a little bit of time relearning some procedures in order to get it back to normal. So you can throw a little bit of a wrench in the mix when you do just hard disconnect the battery. However, I've done that through my whole career and never had any issues. There are some makes and models, like European makes and models for example, BMWs in particular, that need to have the batteries registered to the vehicle once you do replace them. So something to keep in mind for some of those more complex vehicles however Toyotas are relatively an economy vehicle and so I don't believe we'll have to be doing that today but German cars are a little bit more picky so we'll get these terminals snug down and another important thing to remember is you want to get them fully fitted these terminals have sort of a cone shape so they're a little skinnier at the top a little wider at the base 
So you want to make sure, once you get these caps off, of course, I have seen people leave these on before, which is a big kerfuffle. But you want to take the terminal and really wiggle it down. You'll end up getting a little bit extra throw onto that terminal. Alright, I always give them a wiggle afterwards, make sure there's no play. We have the battery hold down that is tight, battery is secure, positive post is tight, negative post is tight. Besides resetting the clock, we're good to go. So let's give this thing a start, see how she runs, set the clock, and we're in good shape. Alright. So. are good to go now one last note that I want to mention to you guys before we call this a wrap for a video is right here you can see there's a date code stamped on the battery 14 11 17 sometimes they have the month and year stamped on the negative post however this factory Toyota battery has its date code here that means this battery is going on, what, 15 years old? Or, I'm sorry, f five years old? So, from my experience, a battery will average you about four to eight years, depending on your climate and the conditions that the car is put in. So this battery is right on time. I'm not looking at any other potential electrical issues that cause drainage. So it's just another good thing to know. Keep an eye out for any date codes. Like I said, sometimes they are stamped on top of the negative battery post. Just so you can get an idea on how old and what age your battery has currently. Thanks again for watching. I hope you learned something new. I hope it either brought you entertainment or information. Be sure to like and subscribe the video if you did enjoy. And keep an eye out for some future content I have coming out. I got some really cool projects I'd love to show you along the way. And we got some really big stuff coming soon. So keep your eyes peeled and we'll catch you on the next one. Peace.